There's so many things to show us that we can't rely on, on the Bible. How does that sound? I mean, I agree with your point. Because personally, I've always been strong in Islam, and I will plan for Khan Kajabi, inshallah, soon. Yeah. So I have been trying to get closer to Dina. Alhamdulillah. Yeah. Um, but I feel like it was just like trials and doubts coming recently, especially when I started praying for like three times a day at least. MashaAllah, that's very good. Get closer to religion. And then obviously, I started getting loads of doubts all of a sudden, and I was like, oh wow. Yeah, the thing is, the thing is, sometimes doubts come and confusions come. But if you have a solid base that, that God is one, that Allah is one, Allah alone deserves to be worshipped and that Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi is the messenger, the Quran is the book of Allah, then because you have this firm foundation, whatever doubts come, you can push them away. But even if you have a doubt, you can go and ask someone like a, a trustworthy person, a knowledgeable person, and they, sh and they should be able to uh, respond clearly. You see what I mean? Like if you look at the, the life of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu if you look at the, the Quran, basically the more you study, the more you'll become certain. And um, you know, as Muslims, you know, Iman, the faith in Allah, it has, it has five parts, okay? Iman is what we believe in our heart. So in our heart, we believe in Allah, we believe in His messengers, we believe in the angels, the books, the last day. We believe this in our heart. Iman is also what you say with the tongue. To be Muslim, you have to say La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. So, and then also Iman is, is actions. When a person prays, when a person fasts, when a person reads Quran, when you look after your parents, this is also Iman, faith. And then Iman will go up and Iman will go down. You know, some days, for example, you listen to Islamic talk, sometimes you're around good people, sometimes you, you pray that day, you feel your Iman is very strong. Then another time, maybe we, we neglect our prayers, or we neglect Islam, or we're in bad company, or we, we commit sins, our Iman will go down. So the main thing is, try and keep your Iman strong. Yeah, I mean, obviously, my mom used to be Muslim, but she converted to Christian like five years ago. Okay. I don't live with my mom, and my dad is atheist, and so okay. obviously I grew up like Muslim. I grew up in Qatar, and so like, to me, I just stuck with Islam, but I never really got that Muslim upbringing. Okay. And like, learn to put, so I, I had to learn yeah. about Islam myself and get to So, see. what's your background if you don't, if you grew up in Qatar? Are you Qatari? You're I'm, Arab? I'm Ethiopian and Arab. My mom's Ethiopian and Arab, but my dad's Arab. <laughs> but you understand Arabic? Sure, sure. How, how about when you read Quran? When I've been reading it, honestly, I've been using uh, English Quran. Okay. But I have Arabic tutoring, so inshallah I'll be doing an Arabic within the next six months. Okay, mashallah. But with reading it, it was quite difficult at first, and then I started getting translations and stuff. Yeah. And I have, uh, I think I got it from a Muslim in London actually. Okay. It's a uh, Quran in English. Okay. So okay, that's good. But e even if you. If the more you read Quran, the more you connect yourself with Quran, you'll find your Iman will increase. But like even the, you know, the Arkan uh, al Arkan Iman, the pillars of Iman. Uh, five pillars of Islam and six pillars of Iman. The the six things we believe in. Have you come across this? I, I think you have. Yeah. You know, uh, the there's a famous hadith in which Umar Rajul An he came. He was sitting with the Prophet and they said that a, a man came. We haven't seen this man before and there was no sign of travel on him, which they found very strange. Because obviously in those days, if you're in, if you're in a small city or a small town like Medina, you should know everyone. But then a stranger came, but he had no sign of travel on him. And they said that this person, you know, he came to the Prophet he sat down in front of him and he became knee to knee. And then he asked the Prophet ﷺ, he said, uh, Islam, what is Islam? And the Prophet ﷺ said, Al Islam, and tashhada ala ilaha illallah, wa anna Muhammad Rasulullah. You bear witness that none has the right to worship Allah, and Muhammad ﷺ is a messenger. Taqeem al salat, you establish the prayer, you pray five times a day. You give the zakat. Wa tasum al Ramadan, you fast in the month of Ramadan. Wa tahij al bayt in the alayhi sabila. And you perform hajj if you are able to. So then the, the questioner, he said, Sadaqta. And the, the companion said, they were surprised, like, how can this man ask 
And when the Prophet answered, he said that you have spoken the truth. So then he, the, the man, he asked the second question. He said, Mal Iman, what is Iman? So this is the, the point I wanted to mention. And to know Billah, that you believe in Allah, wa malaikatihi, you believe in his angels, wa kutubihi, his books, wa rasulihi, his messengers, wa yawm al akhir, you believe in the last day, wa tu'minu bil qadr, and you believe in the decree of Allah. Whatever happens, good or bad, it's from the decree of Allah. Sadaqta, he said, you speak, spoken the truth. Then the, the hadith continues about ihsan, ihsan, and ta'budullah ka anna ka turafa illa am takum turafa inna hu yiraq, that you worship Allah as if you see him. We should try to worship Allah as if we see him. But if we're not able, then we, we at least know that Allah is constantly watching us. And then he asked about the sa'a, when is the, the hour? And the Prophet ﷺ replied, Al anhu la a'lamu min sa'il. The, the one who's been asked, he doesn't know more than the one question. Like Jibreel Ali, the, the man doesn't know, and the Prophet Muhammad doesn't know. Only Allah knows. Then he asked about some signs. So from the signs, he said that when you see the, the barefooted, lowly uh, shepherds with no clothes, as in very poor, when they begin to compete with each other in building tall buildings. This is one, that, one of the signs of their judgment. When you see those people, you know, if you look at the Arabs, obviously now because of the, the oil, they became very rich. But before that, the Arabs were very, you know, like they were Bedouins, they had, they had sheep, they had camels, they lived in tents. They were very simple people. These people, within the last 70, 80 years, they become very wealthy from the blessings of Allah. And now you can find all over the Arab world, you know, one builds the tallest building, then the second one builds the tallest building, then the, the third one will come and build another taller building. This is constantly going on. The Prophet Muhammad said this 1,400 years ago. There's no, there's no way that a human being can say this. So there, there's, there's so many signs. But the point I wanted to mention is the six pillars of Iman. When you compare this to uh, Christianity, which you was mentioning, the Christian belief, you don't find anything clear in the Bible explaining their belief. Rather, about 300 years after Jesus, you know, the church, they, they argued a lot. Their bishops argued a lot, and they came together in a place called Nicaea. And then by, by, by debating, by arguing, by voting, then they came with this uh, trinity. God the Father, God the Son, God, which doesn't, it doesn't make any sense. So I, I wouldn't be... I mean, I have no, no belief in Christianity or yeah. anything, but it was just like, I was studying a lot about Islam, and then yeah. obviously I came across that, and then I didn't live with my mom, she lives in another country, but like, she was trying to preach to us and stuff and convert okay. us. And so it's just something that I remember. It. See, like, uh, see, the thing is, because because uh, Musa alayhi salam, Moses was sent by Allah, because Isa alayhi salam, Jesus was sent by Allah, and because their books have been changed and corrupted, it, it is possible they still have something correct in it. But the only way we know it's correct is when the Quran has confirmed it. But the message of Quran is is, is very clear. Even the you know, Allah has promised that the وَلَقَدْ يَسَّلَّ الْقُرْآنِ الذِّكْرِ فَهَلْ مِنْ مُتَّكِرٍ Allah said that we have made the Qur'an easy to remember. So is there anyone who will, who will remember it? And as you know, hundreds of thousands of people, they memorize Qur'an from beginning to end. If we take this and just ask any other religion, any other way of life, any other system, have you memorized your book? No one. But the Qur'an, you know, people who are, they can't speak Arabic. Like if you go to Malaysia, if you go to Bangladesh, if you go to many countries where the, their language is not Arabic, seven year old, eight years old, they memorize Quran. Allah says, uh, We are the one who has sent down the reminder and we will preserve it, we will protect it. Allah has taken the promise to protect the Quran. So the Quran has been protected. So, I mean, with Islam, there's, there's so many signs. But the, the basic thing of Islam is the, the ease and the simplicity. Allah is one, worship Him alone, and follow His messengers. Yeah, so, I'll just pray on it some more, I guess. And... Yeah, but you, you, yeah, you, we, constantly we ask Allah for guidance. You know, whenever, whenever we pray, إِهْدِنَا الصِّرَاتُ mustaqim, Or Allah, guide us to the straight path. صِرَاتُ الَّذِينَ أَنَمْتَ عَلَيْهِمْ the path of those you had your favor upon. So when we pray five times a day, in every rakah, every unit of prayer, we are asking for this du'a. 
But the thing is, you pray for this, but the, at the same time, because Allah is the one who controls the hearts, the evidence is so clear. The evidence is so clear. So, but it, it comes down to this, the Iman goes up and down. As long as we try to be in good company, with good friends, we try to uh, practice Islam as much as possible, we learn Islam, we watch videos about, like trustworthy videos about Islam, we read Islamic books, especially the Quran and the Sunnah, and especially, you know, the, if you learn the correct beliefs. There's a, a book I would advise you with. It's called The Free Fundamentals. I'll write it down. Yeah. It's called The Free Fundamentals. Did anything come up on your phone? Oh, uh, no, I just wrote it down. In notes. Yeah, Free Fundamentals. So it's, 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 there's an explanation. It's by a person called Ibn Uthaymeen. I B N. Do you, want, do you want to write it down as well? It, yeah. You can you can buy the book or you can get the um, a PDF. What was that? Ibn. I B N. Space or Thaymin. U T H A. I mean. I mean yeah Y A M E E N. What they mean? This uh, particular book is a very is. is this, this book has been explained by Ibn Uthameen, but it's a very simple book. It's maybe 10 pages, the original book, and it, it covers three questions. You know, the Prophet ﷺ taught that when a person's laid in their grave, you know, as we're laid in the grave, as the people are walking away, two angels are going to come to us, and they're going to ask us, you know, three questions. Man Rabbuk, who is your Lord? Ma what is your religion? What is your way of life? Man Rasul, who is the messenger? So obviously a person has to answer that my Lord is Allah, my religion is Islam, and my messenger is Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So this book actually explains these three things. That's why it's called the Three Fundamentals. And so this book, it, it, everything was in it, every Muslim has to know. But it explains who is Allah, what do we believe about Allah, with evidences from Quran and Sunnah. It explains what is Islam with evidences from Quran and Sunnah. And it explains, you know, uh, about the life, of, very briefly about the life of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And even, sorry to you, there's, there's a book, um, I with a sealed nectar, or no, the moon, the, a simpler one is called The Moon Split. And it's, it's the life of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. I think that the more we learn about him, then we more we realize, you know, who he is, who his status, the truthfulness which he came with. But it's, it's just about trying to go forward. Do you, do you have Muslim friends and...? Yeah, yeah, like all my family is Muslim and stuff. Okay. From, and the funny thing is my dad is white originally, but he okay. has a Bahraini passport because okay. he, he's lived in the Middle East his whole life. And okay. So I grew up in an Arab community and everything. But my mom... In Qatar or here? In Qatar. Okay. And Dubai and stuff. He moved around because my dad worked for the Qatari government. Okay. And so like... I have the, the community and things, but it's just like finding my own path. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, what it is, because Alhamdulillah, I became Muslim when I was quite young. And obviously, my ch I have children, probably your age or older, and they're Muslim. They're, they're brought up as Muslim. I taught them to pray, they have to read Quran, they have to wear hijab, etc., etc., etc. But at the same time, they're Muslim, but at the same time, they have to choose themselves. Like, once I'm there, they can follow it. But if I'm not there, or if I'm away from them, they have to choose. So I think every, every Muslim, we are Muslim, alhamdulillah. But we have to do some research. We have to find out why I'm, I'm Muslim. But I can't, I can't be, uh, you know, like a doctor. I can't be a doctor because my father's a doctor and his father's... A, I have to study. So same, we, alhamdulillah, we are Muslim. But at the same time, every Muslim, he should learn, he should study. Yeah. And then you'll find your Iman will increase, you'll feel more, you know, certain. Uh, Alhamdulillah. Inshallah. <laughs> Sister, anything else to add or any more questions? No problem. We're here every Saturday. If you have any more questions, then feel welcome. Do you guys have like any socials or something? Um, these brothers, they have like the channels. Uh, yeah. Mostly of, uh, of Dawa and mostly, you know, like Speaker's Corner. So I think if you, if you type in Dawa, Speaker's Corner, but if you, if you look at those books and then try and uh, find some like, find yeah, a further understanding. But the, and your, your family as well, like, 
amongst your family you find someone who's practicing and then you, you try to spend time with them and, and learn from them as well. Yeah, it's just because most of, the only people in the UK is my dad and my big brother. Um, okay. But, um, and you, do you stay with them if you don't mind me asking? Yeah, I stay with them, but like not usually. I usually stay with uh, family. Okay. And so like... But your dad's not Muslim, you said. No, he's, he doesn't believe in anything, but he's like, you know when they're pushing towards Islam? Okay. He's, like, he's lingering in the middle. I've been trying to get him to actually believe was, was he Muslim at a time or never? No, he just, he's never been anything. Okay. But obviously, he grew up, he lived and like, he only just moved to the UK. Okay. Years ago, in the Muslim community, all okay. these like values where he thinks yeah, yeah, yeah. is like it's engraved in the like the Muslim mindset. Alhamdulillah. And even like he's telling me I should wear a hijab, even if he's not Muslim himself. He okay. It and he's like, let me buy your buyers and things. So Mashallah, he's Alhamdulillah. He's very supportive, but it's just he hasn't like taken shahada. He hasn't officially become Muslim, but like, okay. Inshallah, he'll get there soon. Inshallah, Inshallah, yeah. Inshallah. Okay, sister, thank you for your time. Thank you. All the best. Okay, Assalamu alaikum. Just... How do you feel about that? Shall I, shall I stop this one? Yes.